Hi, I'm Sarah Lacey. Thank you for joining TechCrunch TV. Our guest uh, commuted very far to come here. <laughs> He's just right. upstairs yeah. from us, David Sachs of Yammer. Congratulations, you Thank raised you. yet more money. Yes. 25 million, correct? Yes. yes. And so this brings the amount you've raised so far to 40 million. Right, exactly. That's a lot of cash, David. Is everything they say about the bubble in fundraising true? Did you have people just throwing crazy valuations in cash at you? Um, you know, I, I don't think people are just kind of throwing money at us. Mm -hmm. um, it's, um, you know, we raised money in January as well. And, um, you know, we noticed that um, between January and, you know, November, the markets thawed a little bit, but it wasn't like a totally crazy process. It wasn't that different from, you know, other processes I've been through over the last few years. Mm -hmm. Everyone in Silicon Valley is obsessed with pivots now. That's kind of become the watchword of the fall. Um, you know, you guys did a pretty crazy pivot. I don't know if you consider it that, but you kind of did because Jammer was started as a project inside of Genie and now seems to have taken off so much bigger. Did that surprise you? Did you expect that to happen? Well, Yammer really wasn't a pivot so much as it was a tool we developed inside of Genie. Um, and we used it ourselves for about six months and we really loved it. And so we decided we should spin this out so that other people could use it. Um, and that's when we launched at TechCrunch 50 in September 2008. We won that event and then kind of the rest is history. Um, so Genie's still you know, working on its original plan and then we've also um, rolled out uh, Yammer as well. Mm -hmm. There's a yeah. sense though that you've kind of left Genie in the dust and you're all Yammer. Is that totally unfair? I don't think it's fair. You know, I'm okay. still very uh, passionately uh, you know, involved in, in Genie and uh, care a lot about, what, what, about its mission, which is to create a family tree of the world. I think it's just a very different sort of mission and, and company from what Yammer is doing. Mm -hmm. Now, when Yammer launched at TechCrunch 50, everyone, mm -hmm. I think Eve Yossi Vardy was even like, oh, why didn't I think of this? Like, mm -hmm. it seemed like such a, of course there should be a Twitter for the enterprise. Mm -hmm. And since then, there have been a ton of companies who've tried to build the fill in the blank for the enterprise. Very few have taken off like Yammer did. Was there something unique about the way you guys built it? Was there something unique about the problem that it was solving? Well, I think this idea of taking social networking and bringing it inside the enterprise, which was our goal from the beginning, um, was, I think it's a very intuitive sort of concept. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's the way that people want to communicate today. Um, people are using social networking to communicate in their personal lives. I think when they get to work, they want to communicate this in a sort of similar way with their coworkers. So I think the, um, the idea was sort of, um, was sort of right. Um, and then also, I think that it's sort of our viral freemium distribution model has allowed it to kind of take off because any employee in the company can just sign up and start using it mm -hmm. and start spreading it to their coworkers. Why isn't there like a Yammer of Facebook or a Yammer of, I don't know, Foursquare would work within the office, but like, why mm -hmm. don't you see more of these, if it's so intuitive, why aren't there more companies doing well at the Enterprise 2.0 game? Right, um, well, you know, Yammer, in a way, is sort of Twitter and Facebook for, for the enterprise. Um, you know, enterprise microblogging was a useful thing to kind of hang our hat on, but we were never truly micro. We never limited the messages to 140 characters. It was never truly blogging because it's all private. Uh, we had threaded conversations and groups. Um, so it was always sort of an enterprise social network. Um, in terms of why other people haven't made it work for, for more tools, I think, um, you know, I guess you have to be specific about which, which type of tool it is. Um, mm -hmm. I noticed that the last TechCrunch uh, Disrupt, somebody launched a sort of a Quora for, for the enterprise. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see if that, that sort of idea takes off. Um, I think one of the difficulties they're going to have now is, is that Yammer's rolling out a questions app for, for the enterprise. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, you know, we plan to do a lot of these, um, take a lot of these consumer concepts and bring them into the enterprise. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's something interesting about it. When it's in the enterprise, it's necessarily limited. I mean, you can't go from having, you know, five friends to suddenly having a thousand friends because you're just adding everyone you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, people always talk about when you're an early adopter on certain things and then it gets too big, part of that community is eroded. I guess mm -hmm. in some senses that community never gets eroded within Yammer networks because it's constrained. Do you think right. that changes how these sites evolve? Well, yeah, I mean, the whole um, reason why you need Yammer is because the employees need a private secure space to have um, sort of company conversations. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also a space that the company can ultimately own uh, mm -hmm. and moderate and control. Um, and so, you know, I think there is a need for these sort of separate uh, communication spaces. Mm -hmm. Does it change the features? Does it change yeah, absolutely. usage? I mean, are there different ways that, mm -hmm. that you become something very different? Yeah, I think that over time, Yammer's really sort of customized its solution to solve enterprise problems. So, um, you know, from the get-go, we had all these um, admin features that um, corporate IT could use to moderate and control the network. They could um, not only control user access and content, but also 
things like set IP range restrictions and mm -hmm. they can do directory integration. We have um, SharePoint integration. Um, and there's a lot of other sort of enterprise um, specific tools that we've developed. Mm -hmm. um, all right, freemium. Mm -hmm. Does it work? A lot of people were trying freemium models for a long mm -hmm. time. A lot of people have not made money from it, having a really right. hard time converting. Right. So we think it works. Um, I'm a fan of the freemium model going back to PayPal, which in a sense was a freemium business. Mm -hmm. um, Genie is also a freemium company. It has a subscription model, but the basic service is free. Uh, and the same thing is true. The, of, of Yammer as well. And I think the reason why it's very important for Yammer is that we want all the employees to be able to sign up um, in the most frictionless way possible. You can just sign up, start using it, test it out, see if it's valuable to you. If you like it, you can invite your coworkers. Uh, and only later uh, does the company have to think about um, paying to upgrade. So uh, we think it's a win-win for us because we sort of grow and spread faster, but it's also a win for the company because um, it sort of de-risks the whole value proposition. They don't have to pay for the software without using it first. Mm -hmm. What percentage of your people, of your companies, tend to upgrade? Well, what we've said is that 15% of the users are in paying networks. Mm -hmm. So, um, Does it need to be more than that for you guys to be a big company? I mean, you've raised $40 million, so right. you know, you've know got to build um, something big That now. percentage is really good. Mm -hmm. you know, if we can keep the 15% of, um, of users or paid seats, that, that percentage would be fine. We think we can get it up higher. Uh, it has been steadily trending up as a result of um, our sales team mm -hmm. uh, targeting uh, networks. But, uh, but that, that number is fine. I think if we just keep growing the service, um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the revenue will keep scaling. Is there any one killer app that people get in the premium version that tends to be what pushes them into that? Um, I think it's a bunch of things that you get. Like mm -hmm. I said, it's, um, it's, it's sort of um, control, customization, compliance, configuration. Mm -hmm. um, the big C's. Yeah, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of C words. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's really about a, a sort of a suite of tools that you get. So there's been a rumor floating around the TechCrunch mm -hmm. headquarters and other parts of Silicon Valley that in the early days before Yammer launched, you guys were in some sort of talks with Twitter to somehow merge the companies, be a feature off Twitter. You were trying to put together some sort of deal with them that almost happened. Any truth to any of that? Um, not really. I mean, we never really had Not any... really, so there is some truth. Well, I never had a conversation <laughs> with Twitter about it. Uh -huh. um, so nothing ever really happened there. Um, you know. I think that, um, so, so nothing, nothing, nothing ever really happened. Mm -hmm. Would that have been good or bad for the company had it happened? Um, Would you be stronger as a No, I mean, I, I don't think so. I think ultimately we've really sort of evolved beyond our Twitter-esque roots. I think like we talked about, mm -hmm. um, Yammer's really developed an enterprise-specific solution. Um, you know, Twitter's trying to be as public as possible. We're trying to be as private as possible. I think ultimately they're pretty different solutions mm -hmm. to different problems. Mm -hmm. What's your retention rate like of companies that sign up, of individual users that sign up? Because, you know, sometimes on Yammer, if you work in an office like TechCrunch, people might fly off the hammer at Yammer, fights start, people, it's so frictionless and so easy and so public within the organization that sometimes conversations maybe shouldn't happen on Yammer, happen on Yammer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is there a downside to how how open and friction free that it is? Um, I don't think so. I think each company sets its own culture about how Yammer is going to be used. I mean, the reason why TechCrunch <laughs> probably has a freewheeling Yammer <laughs> network is it's got a freewheeling culture inside right. the office, and people would be yelling we, we at each other. We would offend each other no matter right, what. To exactly. be honest, you'd be, you'd be yelling at each other in uh, you know in the office or online either way. So I think that's your culture. Um, you know. Uh, you know, a lot of companies come to us and say, with this sort of question about what happens if someone posts something inappropriate, you know? And it just hardly ever happens because, precisely because everyone in the company can see it, and people tend not to say things that are gonna, you know, sort of offend their coworkers and, you know, and sort of a, at least if your company culture <laughs> thinks that's not a good idea. Is what right. You're gonna say. right. <laughs> all right, well, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. And we will, uh, in the next segment, talk more about what you're gonna do with all that cash.